the Wasaga Beach Historical Advisory Committee, and the Town Archives, again, invite you to join us for a walk down memory lane as we learn a little bit about the Capstan Inn, which was built by the McLean family and was Wasaga's first grand hotel and the very first to be built on the beachfront. So grab your favorite beverage, put your feet up, and relax as you listen to the tale of the Capstan and its influence in initiating the tourist industry in Wasaga Beach. Today, it seems like an obvious idea to build on the beachfront, but it was 1911, and to John and Sarah McLean, this plan was innovative and pretty risky at the time, as up until then, cottages and the one hotel, the Ivandale, were on the Nottawasaga River. The beach was just a dirt road, and most people preferred to build inland, away from the noise and possible danger, such as storms or flooding from the beachfront. But John and Sarah were a couple with a vision, and they decided to buy the land, build a hotel right on the beach, and call it the Capstan Inn. For those boat enthusiasts out there, a little bit of trivia. A capstan was used to hoist sails by inserting capstan bars and revolving the wheel manually by pushing the bars. Hand-operated capstans eventually went by the wayside with the development of power winches an invention making it much easier to raise the sails. The Capstan Inn occupied the entire block between 1st and 2nd Street. The property ran from the beachfront all the way back to where the LCBO and Beck Square are now located and where the Chamber of Commerce, Post Office and Hydro Building were once housed. Several years later, in 1918, Alexander, or Sandy McLean as he was called, and his brother Hugh Wilson, eldest sons of Sarah and John, built the Dardanella Dance Hall to complement the Capstan Inn. The inn went up in 1912 and was an immediate success for several years. Unfortunately, the original building burned down in early March of 1915, and the newspaper of the day, the Collingwood Bulletin, noted that a disastrous fire occurred on Monday night about 9.30, which destroyed the Capstan Inn. The origin of the fire was a mystery, as the building had been closed for the season, but it was quickly rebuilt in a different style and reopened on July 1st, 1915, to great fanfare, and continued, as it had done before the fire, to be a landmark on the beach. It was an elegant summer hotel, all white, with a wide front veranda and a round rotunda. By 1919, it was a real family affair, with sons Sandy and Hugh running the nearby Dardanella. Guests of the Capstan would take the train from Toronto to Stainer, where they would be met by a horse and buggy and transported the 15 kilometers to the inn, where Sarah, or Grandma as she was called, would be waiting on the porch to greet them. The guests would all dress for dinner, and then as the sun went down, they would all cross the sand of the Dardanella dance hall where they would foxtrot the night away and sip ice cream sodas between dances. Year after year, the same people came back and it was a place full of excitement and romance. After the guests returned to the capstan, grandma would make coffee and sandwiches and the guests would sit out on the wide front porch or rotunda to enjoy the summer breezes. The weekends were particularly popular as the first World War pilots would come over from Camp Borden to see all of the young ladies. After the Second World War began, the atmosphere began to change somewhat. Playland Park was created east of the Capstan and many small cottage courts were also built in the area. The Capstan became quite the night spot and the soldiers continued to come but instead of staying at the capstan, they rented less expensive accommodations at the cottage courts. One of the focal points at the capstan was the large stone cairn in the front of the building. Rumor has it that it was built by prisoners from Kingston Penitentiary as a work project. In any event, each stone was numbered and moved and rebuilt in front of the capstan where it remained until the building was demolished. It was subsequently donated to Nancy Island where it was again taken apart, moved and rebuilt. There it remains with a plaque added commemorating the spot where the remains of the Nancy were found. Grandma and John ran the capstan until her death in 1931, 
after which son Hugh and two of his sisters, Pearl and Iva, operated the inn until 1945. This is when the two sisters sold their interest to their brother. It then underwent an extensive renovation, expanding the dining room to hold a capacity of 128 people. Hugh and his sons Donald and Gordon operated the inn until Hugh's retirement in 1958. It was sold for $33,000 to three businessmen from Sudbury and more renovations took place. An article in the Stainer Sun from 1960 commented that the dining hall has been completely done over and the new furniture is the very latest chrome and plastic design. The property was eventually purchased by Blue Mountain, but sadly, the old girl, known as the Capstan Inn, could not hold out against the ravages of time and the building was eventually demolished in the 1980s. Although this piece of Wasaga's history is gone forever, the Capstan's impact on our town's identity continues. The cultural value to the formation of our tourist industry and the resulting cottage courts, resorts and hotels that were subsequently built on the beachfront were a testament to the ingenuity, hard work and determination of the McLean family. Please join us again for more interesting historical stories about our great town. You can find out more information on the Capstan Inn by contacting the Historical Advisory Committee at wbhac2020 at gmail.com.